Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and we have some more updates from our neighbor Saturn. Updates in regards to its moons, and updates in regards to its rings. And so in this video we're going to be discussing what exactly the scientists have recently found about the rings and the moons, and also if any of this potentially connects. And interestingly, it's only been two months since the previous video, where the scientists announced the discovery of quite a few new moons around Jupiter, making this gas giant the leader in the total number of moons orbiting the planet. You can actually see all of them in the link in the description below, but the majority of newly discovered moons are all really really small and generally much farther away from the planet. And so by March of 2023, Jupiter had 92 confirmed moons. But it only took two months for Saturn to once again beat Jupiter, with the whooping 62 new moons discovered around the ring planet, but basically this article that you can find in the description describing this a little bit more. Saturn once again retakes the moon crown, with a total number of confirmed moons now standing at 145. And that's a mind-blowing number. Although obviously the majority are really small. So 145 moons for Saturn, 92 for Jupiter. But I'm sure the race is far from over and I'm sure more moons will be discovered in the next few months. And that's because these particular moons that were just announced were actually discovered almost a year ago. As a matter of fact, they were discovered along with this moon back in 2022. But it took months and months of analysis and visual observations in order to confirm their existence and in order to confirm that these moons were actually orbiting Saturn. And that's because they all orbit really far away and for the most part in retrograde or in the opposite direction. Here are for example just some of the orbits of these moons. And so trying to identify exactly where these objects are moving was obviously not very easy. Especially because the majority were just a few kilometers across. Much smaller than a typical moon that's usually a few hundred kilometers. The smallest one here was about 2.5 kilometers across or one and a half miles. But what's more intriguing about this discovery is that a lot of these moons seem to be kind of connected in how they were produced back in the days. And so in this case, once the scientists were able to track these objects for several orbits, determining exactly how they move around Saturn, which was obviously not an easy task and involved a lot of modern techniques, where the scientists had to stack and shift various images observed over the period of several months in order to see minute changes determining the orbits of these really, really tiny rocks. And so by using this shifting and stacking technique, which has been previously used to find moons around Uranus and Neptune, they found 63 unusual objects, with somewhat irregular orbits. Here's actually one of the groups, which is referred to as the Inuit, although there is also Gallic and Norse moons as well. And they all have large elliptical orbits with very high inclination compared to regular moons of Saturn. But intriguingly, the newly discovered moons were all from the so-called Norse group, which usually possess the highest orbital separation and all orbit in the opposite direction to Saturn's rotation. With the implication in this case being that they must have all had the same origin, with the only explanation that currently makes sense being a large collision between ancient moons, something that was explored in this older study you can find in the description. And so there must have been a large collision between moons around Saturn, which resulted in the production of a lot of fragments now visible as these somewhat irregular moons. But what's intriguing here is the potential timeline. The scientists believe it must have happened approximately 100 million years ago. And though it's not certain which moons must have been responsible for this, since other moons like Mimas show us these large signs of previous collisions, at this point any of them could have been responsible for this. But that timeline of 100 million years is really intriguing for a different reason. And it's actually related to the other study that was released just a few weeks ago. The study on the rings of Saturn. And a study that essentially focused on some of the older data from the Cassini mission, which was able to collect a lot of data on the rings as it orbited around them before crashing into Saturn. And in this case, the scientists were able to analyze the overall structure and the overall composition of the rings, figuring out their approximate age. Now, unlike other rings around other planets, such as Jupiter, Neptune, and Uranus, the rings of Saturn are predominantly made out of water. In other words, one of the reasons they are so easily visible and so reflective is actually because they contain a lot of ice. Whereas other rings around other objects are usually made out of dust or contain things like carbon, which is much darker. But 98% of this is very bright reflective ice. But the question is, what about the other 2%? Well, it's that other dusty stuff. Much darker, rocky, metallic or carbon-rich materials, which produce darker patches on the rings. 
And so the scientists believe that because Saturn is able to attract a lot of stuff from outer space, over time a lot of dust from other places starts to funnel toward the planet, eventually colliding with some of the icy particles inside the rings, over time darkening the rings and increasing their total mass just a little bit. And so by comparing the ratio between water particles and dust particles, and figuring out the amount of dust that should be colliding with these rings, assuming the total mass of the planet, the scientists estimated that these rings must be anywhere between 100 million and 400 million years old, implying of course that this is a recent development and a somewhat recent formation around Saturn. It must have not existed here for most of the lifetime of this planet. It must have only appeared recently. But what's still unclear is how exactly they formed. Since they mostly contain water ice, it's a lot more likely that this came from some kind of an ancient water ice moon as well. For example, the moon Mimas I mentioned previously contains relatively similar composition and thus contain this unexplained crater on its surface. This is also the moon that's sometimes nicknamed the Death Star after the one from Star Wars. And since the total mass of the rings is about half as massive as some of the smaller icy moons, there's maybe a chance that some of the moons or a potential impact on these moons might have been responsible for the production of the rings roughly around 100 million years ago. And, as I mentioned previously, those unusually small moons, discovered farther away, were also a result of some kind of a collision around the same time. So there's maybe some speculation here whether these two events are somehow related, or whether, for some reason, Saturn experienced a very cataclysmic period approximately 100 million years ago, where a lot of stuff was colliding with other stuff, resulting in the production of the moons, but also the production of the rings. Oh, exactly what was happening here is not a question we can answer yet. But intriguingly, because of those dust impacts into the rings, over time they also provide a bit of a charge to various particles inside the rings, which, when interacting with charged particles from the Sun, eventually become trapped by Saturn's magnetic field and then produce something that's known as the ring rain. Basically the rain of tiny particles that end up entering the atmosphere of the planet, making the rings shrink over time which also suggests that in approximately 100 million years from now, the rings are probably going to be gone. Here's actually what this unusual ring ring sort of looks like. It basically deposits the particles along two specific strips on the planet. This is something that was discovered back in 2018, and we've discussed this on the channel previously. And so in essence, it's actually pure luck that we found ourselves in a time when Saturn has these rings, and the rings have not disappeared yet. They've only been around for about 100 million years, and it's quite likely that they're going to be gone in the next 100 million years from now. But this also obviously raises the question of, has this happened around other gas giants as well? Maybe Jupiter also had these unusual rings previously, and eventually they disappeared, shrunk, and became the tiny rings that it currently has. So this is maybe a question that can be tackled in some of the future studies. And until we discover something else, or until future discoveries, that's pretty much it. Exciting discoveries from Saturn, and a few important answers, but no exact answers just yet. So hopefully in the next few years, we'll know a little bit more. Until those future discoveries, thank you for watching, subscribe, check out some of the previous videos on Saturn in the description below, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.